Hi everyone. So over the last few years, I've been uh, like making Christmas presents for my family members. And for this year, I've had this little idea of a project in mind for a couple of years now. But when I started making them, I sort of uh, had the idea that if I just made a few more, then I could maybe potentially try and sell some as uh, Christmas presents that other people can buy as gifts. Um, but of course, in doing that, I want to actually like, upload the picture or the video, or whatever it is, beforehand so that people can potentially buy them. But what that does is, of course, it spoils the surprise for my sisters who will obviously know what they're going to get before um, Christmas. So, as unfortunate as it is, um, Laura and Katie, <laughs> this is your gift. It's the worm from the labyrinth. Um, so I made it all from scratch, the base and the little worm himself. So if you haven't seen the movie, the movie is called The Labyrinth. And um, at the start of the, the movie, um, when the girl goes into the maze, she meets this little worm and he's um, very cute. Um, but yeah, if you think you might want to buy one as a gift for someone, uh, just check out the description below and maybe send me a message and we can go from there. But anyway, um, yeah, I've got the making of video next, so you can check that out if you like. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I started this project in the middle of winter, so the it's quite cold, obviously, outside in the shed. So I thought that I'd start by microwaving the um, plasticine, uh, and just so I can move it around more because um, it's just too hard to work with, uh, in the cold shed. So yeah, now I'm just getting the rough, the rough form ready. And yeah, you can see, you've got to do the basic shape, the sausage shape, and then bend it backwards. And then yeah, begin putting the striations in the, in his the little sections of his, uh, his body there, whatever, whatever you call it. Now yeah, he's putting the head together and with the plasticine it's it's kind of hard to work with so yeah it's not the I don't know, I, I'm just so much more used to using water-based clay but I thought that I'd still give it a shot um, it does have some pretty good qualities the, the plasticine I mean uh, like obviously it doesn't air dry whereas the water-based clay does dry in the air so yeah, he was just filling out the head. And smoothing over any uh, imperfections in the skin. But this is again a problem that's actually really hard to work with. Because it's, I don't know, it's just not, you just can't really push it around like you can with um, water-based clay. And so at this point here, I realized it's just not doing what I wanted it to do. So I've restarted him uh, with uh, water-based clay. So I've dug out some water-based clay, um, put some water into it, and now I'm going to restart the project again.
Look how cute that little face is. Uh, so with this here, he, the, the sculpt is finished. And now we've got to uh, make a mold. So I always like to um, spray spray the clay because it's water-based clay. I always like to put a water waterproof layer over it. it um, it's just methylated spirits and shellac flakes. And maybe put three coats of that on so so it's got a nice waterproof layer on just to prevent um, the, the clay sort of drying out any more than what it already is. And here just making a wall because uh, I'm going to make a two-part mold because you can probably get away with just two parts. So yeah, here I'm just putting uh, more of the plasticine around the edge, just so half of him, and then we'll cast that and then turn it over and do the same process again. So this is just just it's just fiberglass with a little bit of um, coloring in it. So it's fiberglass resin. Or it's just called resin. The fiberglass itself is just those little strands. So that's one half done, and this is the other half. And now I'm just marking where I'm going to cut it out on the bandsaw, just so it's a nice clean edge. You know, gently <laughs> teasing it apart. And at this stage, the the, yeah, the the clay sculpt itself, the original is just, it's pretty wrecked, so it's basically going to throw that in the bin because we've got all we need, which is just the, the outer shell there. And now we can make multiples from that shell. So here's the first sort of um, test cast. And the, the test cast is always, it's always pretty dirty, so when I pull out of the mold, you can see it's picked up a lot of the uh, the old shellac in the mold. So it looks kind of dirty, but the following casts are nice and clean. I'm just using regular uh, silicon here for the for each of the casts. There's the first one. So he's got, got a bit of uh, shellac stuck to him, but um, the following ones won't have that on them. So here's one of them, nice and clean. And there we go. There's, I think, uh, I think I cast eleven of them. Yes, yeah, what is it? Twelve. Eleven or twelve. So it's bath time for the little guys. Um, yeah, you always want to give them a good wash and just to get any grease and dirt off the surface just so the paint will stick better to, um, to, to the silicon. And I mount, mount the, mounted them all on these bases so that they'd be easy to paint. And there we go. The next step is just to put down some basic colours. Um, obviously, they've got um, a blue wool in the backs of them, so I'm just putting on a few light coats just to sort of flesh out the areas. In the paint, I like to use this uh, just regular roofing silicon to act as a binder for the paint but it wasn't drying very quickly so I, I stuck them all in this tub you know, with water and then left them in the sun for uh, maybe 24 hours just to accelerate the, the curing of the silicon because silicon needs moisture in the air to cure so yeah after leaving them like uh, in that tub with water uh, for 24 hours they um all the paint did cure very quickly and now I'm yeah, sort of working, I, don't know, I guess you call it a I don't know, kind, of, kind of like a wash type thing. So just working on a thin layer of oil paint with silicon and then rubbing it in and then rubbing it off just so all, you know, all the recesses 
uh, pick up the detail. And now here I'm sort of just speckling paint on, so so it's like browns and reds and uh, the blues, just to almost look like like freckles almost. And you can see it kind of looks a bit harsh. And then yeah, then what you do is just just sort of finalise it with a, a just a really thin coat of this like wider paint, and it sort of unifies it, brings it all together. And obviously now just painting with the cute little tongue. So I made, I made a mold of the eyes because I wanted to make them out of uh, like a plasticky type stuff rather than the glass because they can't really paint glass um, easily. So I've cast them out of this, uh, I, don't know, I think it's two part resin which dries white and it just and the paint the paint just sticks to it pretty well so here I'm just mixing it up and pouring it in and me yeah, making uh, I think 11 sets because I, I ended up with 11 um, uh, worms in the end just doing a little test fit here So you just mostly use the airbrush to paint the eyes. Just obviously red first, and then yellow centers, and then black pupils. And now I'm just dipping them in resin, like a glossy resin, a clear, clear glossy resin. I forget what it, what it was. But anyway, yeah, it turned out pretty good. Nice and shiny. It takes a little while to actually line the eyes up properly. And here, yeah, I'm punching the hair in. So I've managed to find some some wool that's that wasn't quite like tightly bound. It's quite loosely. I don't know, spun or whatever you call it, uh, and yeah, here I'm just punching them in with the, um, my little punching tool here, which is just a um, that's like a sewing needle with the with the end cut off in half, that, so it acts like a little fork, and yeah, just pushing them into into all the holes that were sculpted into the mold, and yeah, here I'm just yeah, teasing it out a little bit, just just so that it sits properly, and then just cutting them down. So yeah, just, just really punching in big chunks and then when you cut them down they they sit better and you can tease them out and they sort of fan out like you should see here right there. See the scarf time. The scarf was pretty simple. Um, it took me a little while to figure it out, but just one long strip and knot it around, and then sort of glued it in place.
I'm starting work on the bases. I wanted just to have them obviously sitting on something, so I sort of thought that I would make like something similar to what's in the movie when you see the worm here sitting on like a brick. So I made, yeah, I found a little um, a little stone out in my backyard and used that as a base, and then just stuck these little like again in the movie. There's this funny little funny little uh, tentacle things with the eyes that are coming out of them. So I thought I'd sort of throw something like that in there uh, and yeah, work that into the base. So again, just going through the pro whole process of making a, a mold. So yeah, because because I have to make eleven of them, got to go through the whole mold making process again. stuff I'm using here is like sort of like a plaster but it's very strong plaster it's called Fortin MG and yeah, so there's the little mold and it, the mold turned out pretty good so here's the first one and then I think I've got some straight ahead and just yeah produced another 11 of them or 10 of them and here I'm just painting them with the like, water-based uh, paint burst then whacking on the oil based paint over the top of that which is brown and then just heavily wiping that off so that again just like with the with the worms the, the like the the paint you wipe off it gets left inside the recesses so it sort of brings out the details yeah of the and gives, just gives us like a like a foundation to work from with the um with the texturing Here I had some sponge that I got from the beach, a, uh, I don't know, maybe last summer or something. And I'm just dipping them in the PVA and then just, yeah, so they're immersed in PVA uh, glue, and then just dipping them in the, um, the flock there, just to make like a little, I don't know, like a lichen-y, bushy little thing, just to stick next to those eyes. So yeah, I made a few of those. And I also made some little tufts of grass to stick on the base too, and they look really cute, uh, especially the bright green, which contrasts against the like the darker tones of the the stone here. So you can see me, see me putting it on here. putting on some little mossy grassy bits on here and yeah you can see it sort of, sort of gives it a little bit of life yeah, I'm spray painting the little funny little eye things on and then a varnish over them to make them look shiny 
and then that's the base is pretty much done. Oh yeah, the final step was just to put some rubber feet on the bottom of the bases. And yeah, later on I decided to actually screw on uh, the, the worms to the bases, not this um, uh, toothpick thing. And here's a final little brush of the hair. It's getting presentable. And it should be all done. So that's it, yeah, they're all finished. Ready they go. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Peace.